Every time you drive over a bridge, you might wonder how strong it is. The truth is, American bridges are getting weaker every day. The federal government says one out of eight bridges is considered structurally deficient. Jeff Glor is near one of them, the Tappan Zee Bridge on New York's Hudson River. Jeff, how is it up there? Charlie. Uh, well, Charlie, it's, uh, it's warm here right now. The water calm, but the bridge not in great shape. Uh, this is one of the most extreme examples. Uh, this is a bridge that was supposed to last for 50 years. It's now been 57. It was a bridge that was designed to handle 100,000 vehicles a year, a day. It's now 139,000. And it's part of an overall national trend of infrastructure that's been overextended and underfunded. The collapse of the I-35 bridge in Minneapolis five years ago last week was the most dramatic and most horrific example of what can happen. And that bridge tragically cost the lives of 13 people and injured another 145. And if you ask Barry LaPatner, author of Too Big to Fall, the next disaster is much closer than anyone wants to believe. Since 1989, we've had nearly 600 bridge failures in this country. And while they're not widely publicized, the fact of the matter is that a large number of bridges in every state are really a danger to the traveling public. The most recent federal highway report in 2009 found that of the 600,000 bridges in the U.S., 72,000 were structurally deficient, meaning in poor condition. 18,000 were fracture critical, meaning there's no redundancy. If one piece fails, the whole bridge does. Nearly 8,000 bridges fell into both of those categories, including the longest bridge in New York State, the Tappan Zee. It's a dinosaur, and, and that's, that's the issue. Rockland well, County Executive Scott, Scott Vanderhoff says yeah, infrastructure is often taken a back seat during tough economic times. When you think about where money should be allocated, one would think that making sure structures like this are safe would be right at the top of the list. Why do you think it hasn't been? Well, I, I think we've debated it and studied it for over a decade. You've got to bite the bullet and you've got to replace these aging infrastructures before you do have a, a serious problem. Replacing this bridge will cost at least five billion. LePatner says fixing every one of the most at-risk bridges in the U.S. will cost up to 60 billion. He is not holding his breath. I'm hoping that we're going to confront our politicians and make them address the perilous state of our nation's infrastructure once and for all. The Patner says in many of these cases, the money is available. Right now, the political will is not. Charlie and Gail. Jeff, thank you.